So today's lesson is our last lesson for hydraulics and um, fluids. And we're going to talk more in depth about streamlining. I kind of mentioned it yesterday. I'm going to talk a little bit about more today. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about the continuity principle, which is one of those things that led to Bernoulli's principle. Okay, so any object moving through a fluid is going to feel some sort of um, frictional force that opposes its motion. And if it's moving through a fluid, we call this frictional force drag. And to reduce drag, we have to streamline. Now, streamlining reduces turbulence because turbulence, because as from yesterday's lesson, causes those ed eddies which remove kinetic energy away. Now, there's different ways that we can do that. Um, course we have um, wind tunnels too bad we're not in class otherwise we would do some experiments with some wind tunnels but um you can see here we've got some turbulence right here but in the front this is a nice laminar flow which is what we we want when we're actually designing the shape engineering the shape of a vehicle that's going to move through a fluid whether it's a submarine a car or a plane and a lot of the times we actually look towards um, nature because evolution has created great ways of um, streamlining. I mean, a shark is perfectly streamlined to be moving through the ocean. That's why they're so fast, right? Same with birds, right? Now, getting back to drag, just like when we talked about frictional forces, we had that coefficient of friction, which depended on uh, the two surfaces that were in contact. Similarly, when we have drag, we have a drag coefficient. That drag coefficient does depend on a few things, such as the density of the medium you're going, medium you're going through, and it also depends on the surface area that's in contact with that fluid. So again, if you had like a, a flat plate, Let's say you had air flowing to the right here. A flat plate has a very, very large drag coefficient. It's 1.28. Right? That's not very well streamlined. Okay, if you did a prism like this, it's a little better. But still, that air is coming up to a barrier here. A sphere or a bullet is even better. But the best here, the best example here is this airfoil which is why they're designed that way. Right, so these are just a couple examples of airfoils. Right, a highly streamlined airplane will have a wing with a drag coefficient this small. Whereas if you were skydiving and you opened a parachute, right, you would have a drag coefficient this large. You can also see that cars over the the decades have changed quite a bit, right? Obviously, this is a lot more streamlined than this. In fact, this has about a drag coefficient of 0.7, whereas this is almost half of that at 0.4. Right? Now, I also wanted to talk to you about continuity. So I told you yesterday As you're moving through, um, let's say the water is moving through a pipe, if you have a small cross-sectional area, so you cut out this certain area here. So here you have a volume, and right here, that circle there would be some cross-sectional area. If you go into a pipe where you increase your cross-sectional area, you actually slow down. And this comes from the idea that that volume of water here which we call the volume flow rate, needs to stay the same. Volume flow rate is equal to that cross-sectional area times the speed. So we have a volume flow rate here. We have a volume flow rate here. Because they need to stay the same, we can equate those two equations. Now, because the volume flow rate needs to stay the same, that doesn't mean that the area and, and speed need to stay the same. If we were to increase um, this area, we would have to decrease the speed 
so that it still equaled the previous volume flow rate. So let's try um, a couple questions with this. Question number one. You have some pump, pump fluid into a pipe at a flow rate of 80 cubic centimeters per second. So flow rate is Q, and that's going to be 80 cubic centimeters per second. If the diameter of the pipe is 1.4 centimeters, so diameter is 1.4 centimeters, what's the average speed of the fluid? So we saw the equation volume flow rate equals area times speed. Now if we're solving for speed, we can rearrange this equation by just dividing both sides by area. And you'll get speed equal to volume flow rate Q over area. We don't have area. We have diameter. But we can assume this pipe is perfectly circular and the area would be pi r squared for a circle, which in our case would be pi times r, which is half the diameter, so that would be 0 0.7 centimeters squared. So we can put this into this equation. We know what q is. q is 80. And area is pi times 0 0.7 centimeters squared. Now the units, you'll have centimeters cubed and centimeters squared. So you're going to left with, be left with centimeters per second, which is the units that we want. And if you just put that onto your calculator, 80 divided by pi times 0.7 squared, get about 52 centimeters per second. And just pausing. All right, question two, which looks at the continuity principle. At a point in a pipe carrying a fluid, the radius is 2 centimeters. And the average speed is 14 centimeters. So let's sort of draw that. We have a radius of a pipe. Right? R equals 2 centimeters. And the speed is 14 centimeters per second. What is the average speed of the fluid at a point where the radius is only 1.3? So this pipe sort of does this. Now we know it speeds up, but let's confirm that with the equation. So in this case, our new r, let's call it r2, equals 1.3 centimeters. And we want to figure out what v2 is. Let's call this r1 and v1. So the volume flow rate has to stay the same. So q1 must equal q2. So that means area. 1 times speed 1 must equal area 2 times speed 2. Now again, we're given radius, not area. So the area for a circle would be pi times r squared, where r is 2 centimeters squared, multiplied by the speed, which is 14 centimeters per second. And that equals, again, area 2. We know r, so pi r squared. So pi times 1.3 centimeters squared times v2. Now on each side of the equation, we have pi. So that's actually just going to cancel. And then what we can do is divide both sides by 1.3 squared. in order to isolate V2 on its own. So 
So now we've isolated V2. You can put the rest in our calculator. Where we have 2 squared times 14 divided by 1.3 squared. We get about 33. So the speed has definitely increased and we get 33 centimeters per second.